this is a truth channel. If you don't like it, leave. Okay. Uh, and, and don't forget to unsubscribe, unfollow, and smash the thumbs down button. Okay. Uh, so if you don't like this message from White Magic Tiger, I would like you to unsubscribe, unclick the notification bell, and smash the thumbs down button. Smash it, smash it, because this is a truth channel. I only want brothers and sisters who love the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And what's the truth? The truth is God. Namaste, brothers and sisters. It's the White Magical Tiger. Today, we've got an apology video. Uh, it's for the... I, I mean this seriously, like a real apology video. And it's titled... Um, sluts whores and 304s and uh, if you don't know what a 304 is like if you have an old school calculator and you type in the digits 304 and you flip the calculator upside down it, it spells the word ho and so people have been using the word 304s and um so to start off this apology video um i know that this is a messed up world and there's a lot of just messed up mindsets when it comes to sexuality and there's just a lot of sexual trauma and all this for men and for women. And uh, so, for the, so for the men and for the women that are doing the real work and really working on improving themselves and becoming the best version of themselves, like, I genuinely am sorry because one of these, these previous videos, I, I said it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. That's the title of the video. Uh, I just kind of casually used that word, kind of harshly, like uh, saying like, uh, kind of like degrading women that act like sluttish, whorish, uh, that kind of thing. And it's very harsh. Those are very harsh words. And so that's not normally my personality. I'm normally pretty cool and considerate of others. Um, however, uh, White Magic Tiger channel, well, originally started off as the Texas Tim channel. And then uh, God gave me the, the name White Magic Tiger after a 30-day juice cleanse in Bali. And, and so now it's the White Magic Tiger channel. And uh, it originally started off as a truth channel. Uh, and the truth is not popular at all. Uh, talking about the truth about the food, the poison in the food, the GMO, the Roundup, the pesticides, the herbicides, talking about the junk in the water, the heavy metals, the prescription pills, the birth control that's found in the water, the, the estrogen that's found in the water, the fluoride that's found in the water, the stuff being sprayed in the, in the skies. Now here in Rishikesh in India, it's blue skies. I mean, normally it's just really polluted, but I haven't seen any of the spring, but you go back to the mainland, LA, San Francisco, New York City, Dallas, Texas, Austin, Texas, just like it, they're being bombarded. And, and, and other parts of the world are being bombarded as well, uh, but not as much as like England and the United States, like Western, Western countries, they're really getting bombarded with the spring. Um, talking about September 11th, the truth behind that and the group that really did it. Um, and let's just say right now, we know what's going on in the Middle East. There's a fight between, um, let's just say, uh, Jews and Arabs. And uh, well, who did they blame 9-11 on? They blamed it on the Arabs. Well, who's the enemy of Israel? The Arabs. So who, who most benefited from 9-11? And I just encourage you to research uh, Dancing Jews 9-11. In the days after the September attacks, there were countless rumors about strange coincidences surrounding the events. One report about a group of Middle Eastern men spotted the morning of September 11th parked just across the river from New York City has not gone away. Investigation of their presence has led to questions about whether Israel was conducting espionage on U.S. soil. We're joined now by ABC's John Miller with an exclusive report this evening. That's right, Elizabeth. This is a case that took the FBI and the CIA more than two months to sort out, while five Israelis waited in jail. It began when this woman was watching the Twin Towers burning from her apartment in New Jersey. She noticed three men on top of a van, posing for pictures with the towers burning in the background. And I could see that they were, like, happy. You know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me. You know, they didn't look shocked. I thought it was very strange. The witness called police, who stopped the van hours later and arrested five men. All five, it turns out, were Israeli. They were turned over to the FBI. Sources tell ABC News, during a check of national security databases, some of the men were listed as having had connections with Israeli intelligence. At the FBI, that set off alarm bells. The FBI needed the answers to three important questions. Who were these men? What brought them to that parking lot on the morning of September 11th? And did they have any advanced knowledge of what was going to happen that day? The men said they were just taking pictures at the time. They said they worked for a company called Urban Moving. 
the FBI obtained a search warrant for the company's offices. Two SUVs were filled up with between 9 and 12 boxes and computers. Not long after the arrest, the offices of Urban Moving were simply abandoned. Almost everything was left behind. In jail, the five Israelis were repeatedly interrogated and given lie detector tests. Stephen Gordon was their American lawyer. They were asked questions if they had ever been approached by or hired by any non-United States intelligence community. While there is still some debate among American intelligence officials, many investigators believe some... ...in New York City on September 11th, 2001, and, and uh, a video is worth a thousand words kind of thing. Um, so that's this whole rabbit hole as in itself, and I encourage you to look up the biblical scripture uh, from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9, where Jesus Christ says... Um, these Jews are not really Jews. Uh, it's a cover. It's a front. They're really Satanists. They really are devil worshipers. And so the conclusion I've come to is that there's genuinely really good Jews. Like they, they love, they, they respect the Torah. They keep the commandments. They love God. Um, and then there's some that say they're Jews, but they're not behind closed doors. They're doing like, uh, they're worshiping the devil. <laughs> like they're, they're, they're doing like human sacrifice and black magic and crazy stuff. My next guest was used also in worshiping the devil, participated in human sacrifice rituals, rituals and cannibalism. She says her family has been involved in rituals for generations. She is currently in extensive therapy, suffers from multiple personality disorder, meaning she's blocked out many of the terrifying and painful memories of her childhood. Meet Rachel, who is also in disguise to protect her identity. You come from generations of ritualistic uh, abuse? Um, yes, my family has an extensive family tree, and they keep track of who's been involved and who hasn't been involved. And it's gone back to, like, 1700. And so you were... Right. Maybe. I was born into a family that believes in this. And, and this, is a, this is... Does everyone else think it's a nice Jewish family? From the outside, you appear to be a nice Jewish girl? Definitely. And you all are worshipping the devil inside the home? Right. There's other Jewish families across the country. It's not just my own family. Really? And so who knows about it? Lots of people now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I talked to a police detective in the Chicago area, and several of my friends know, and I've spoke publicly before. And... So when you were brought up in this, this kind of evilness, did you just think it was normal? Um, I've blocked out a lot of the memories I had um, because of my multiple personality disorder. But yes, I mean, it's like if you grow up with something, you think it's normal. Mm -hmm. I always thought... So what kinds of things? You don't have to give us the gory details, but what kinds of things went on in the family? Um, well, there would be rituals in which babies would be sacrificed and you would have to... You know, Who's babies. Um, there were people who um, bred babies in our family. No one would know about it. A lot of people were overweight, so you couldn't tell if they were pregnant or not. Or they would supposedly go away for a while and then come back. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to point out: not all Jewish people sacrifice babies. I mean, no, no, it's not a very I think we kind of know thing. That. <laughs> I just want to point that. Out. <laughs> this is the first time I heard of any Jewish people sacrificing babies. But anyway, so yeah, you witnessed the sacrifice. Right. Um, when I was very young, I was forced to participate in that, in which I had to sacrifice an infant. And the, the purpose of sacrifice is to what? Is to bring you what? What are you sacrificing for? For power. Uh-huh. Power. And so, were you, you were ever used? Were you ever used yourself? Um, I was molested. I was raped several times. Mm -hmm. um, and what's your mother doing? Um, she's... In all of this? What's her role in all of this? What is... I'm not exactly what her role is. I haven't, you know, recovered all of my memories, but her family was extremely involved. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she brought me to it. Mm -hmm. Both of my parents brought me to it. And where is she now? Um, she's, um, lives in the Chicago metropolitan area. She's on the Human Relations Commission of the town that she lives in. And she's an outstanding citizen. Nobody would suspect her. Were you raised with a sense of right and wrong, Rachel? Yeah. I mean, it's like we, I had both. 
I mean, to the outside world, everything we did was proper and right. And then there were the nights that things changed, that things just got turned around. What was right was what was wrong was right, and what was right was wrong. That's what helps to create somebody to develop MPD. Mm -hmm. Multiple personalities. Right. right. Now, in, in your family, did you all call it worshiping the devil? No. Right? Or did, I don't know. It was just evil, it these was, things you did. Right. right. Well, I said it was evil, and mm -hmm. they said it was good. Um, there's a book that I had just come across called Lilith's Cave, which is a book of Jewish mysticism and um, supernatural. And there's a lot in that book that relates to what I, you know, endured when I was a child. <laughs> Uh, for those who know, they know. God's revealed the truth to you. And Jesus Christ, he said it multiple times in the New Testament. They're the ones that killed him. Like, they're the, they're, they're the ones that, uh, their Talmud, their Talmud, their, 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 their holy book. It's not holy, their unholy book. Um, I, pretty, I know this is like a, a tangent on the apology video. Um, but they say that you can kill anyone as long as you do it indirectly. And that's, that's what the Jews did. They, uh, they, they convinced Pontius Pilate to, to murder Jesus, but it's like, Jesus was only murdered because the Pharisees and Sadducees were pushing it so hard um, that Jesus needed to be tortured and murdered. And um, yeah, uh, anyways, not the point of today's video, but uh, always going down rabbit holes on this one. So I made some notes and uh, so at the top I have, I was thinking about a title for this and I have, Tricks and hoes, whores, thoughts, thoughts. I had to look up thought. It's that hoe over there. 304s, sluts, sleuths, skanks, hookers, prostitutes, Jezebels. Um, I would I throw the OnlyFans girls in there too. Um, and then I have uh, and beta male Ahab simps. Uh, that, that's a big part of this as well. Um, there's these uh, beta male Ahab simps that are just kind of sympathizing with the women's behavior like this and getting upset at men like me for calling them out for their behavior um and so because there's also men like let's look at feminism y'all it's like who created feminism men men created feminism why because it made sex way easier like sex is the easiest it's ever been in all time in the past you had to date a woman you had to court her and then usually marry her to sleep with her that's gone it is so easy to get laid like it's so easy and that's the success of feminism like that that's what it was it was just to to take down all the barriers so now men they don't have to definitely don't have to marry you don't have to court you and some of these tricks you don't even have to take them on a date like now it's, it's become so easy you can just get on tinder and you can like straight up say do you want to have sex and some of these tricks will just say yeah sure like it's become that easy and this is a big problem in society and i want you for y'all that don't know i practice celibacy i i am regularly turning down sex um uh, and i mean maybe not like like every single day but it, the moment does arise and usually these women are like what's up with this dude like uh like i, I could be confident and flirtatious but then they're just like why is he not making moves why is he not sleeping with me kind of thing and that's when I tell them, like, yo, I'm waiting for marriage. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna marry a girl that just so easily takes off her pants, takes her clothes off, opens up her legs. Like, most women do this, y'all. They're so easy. They're so easy. And I find it very unattractive. It's not wipeable material. And it falls into that category I just said. And you might be like, this is a horrible apology. But I'm just like, this is a truth channel. And like, some of this stuff is true. Like, this is straight up true. Um, and it's a problem. Now, the, big, the biggest reason why is because of the change in the 1960s. And, and I think in the early 70s, they legalized abortion. And then the 60s, I believe they came out with birth control. And you have like condoms, IUD, whatever. Is that what it's called? The thing? Okay. Um, and so prior to the 1960s, women in mass were not so promiscuous as they are today. Because if they did, they would get pregnant and be a single mother because if they just slept with random dudes that dude's probably just gonna walk out on them uh if they're not doing it out of a place from love and so nowadays though there's no consequence quote unquote consequences which used to be natural for thousands of years uh but for the last like since 60 so like the last 50 60 70 years um now now 
women for the first time are, are promiscuous. Uh, I mean, I know there's been prostitutes and stuff, but, um, but essentially uh, they call it sexual liberation, sexual freedom. And it's like, you're not. You, the more and more you live this way, you become a sexual slave, um, a slave to your sexual desires. You're not free. You're not liberated. And you, a lot of the, a lot of the people, they're going to be wondering, like, why are you focusing so much on women here? It's because sex for men and for women is, is two different things. Um, women, it's very easy. It's very easy for them. There's, they could, they could go out today and, and find somebody. Uh, the challenge for them is finding a high quality man. This is the standard female delusion chart. It is a tool for bringing balance back to the dating market. The standard female delusion chart is replacing the old chart because there was some confusion. Here's how the chart works. We all know that only a few people are very dumb, most people are average, and a few people are very smart. This creates a shape called a bell curve. It works the same way with other traits like height and attractiveness. Most people are average. I received a lot of constructive feedback about the old chart. I was told that men and women match up evenly, but that's only true in long-term relationships. So this is how a woman would see men that she knows, maybe 25 men at most. The other 4 billion men, however, she would see like this. As you can see, most of us are disgusting. And if you are a male, three or below, you're this cute little ghost. So generally speaking, men rate women on a bell curve, and women rate men on a Jezebel curve. And of course, it's true that some men underrate women, but other men overrate women, and they are people, so it balances out. On the other hand, women rate men they do not know as 80% garbage. This model is supported by data from every dating app, by going outside and listening to women when they talk. It depends on what he looks like, bro. <laughs> Based on someone's personality, you could really hit it off yeah. with someone, but attractiveness is a big player of it. That sounded very shallow. And by being attractive. If you are a man who has moved past this line, you'll know what I mean. The standard female delusion chart can help keep women out of the sleeper zone, where they languish in emotional neglect, waiting for commitment that was never coming. It works by correcting ludicrous female perceptions, like this. Let's go through the chart piece by piece. You can pause on each one to let them sink in. This is how men see women, normal. This is how women see men, brutal. This is how women see themselves, delusional. And this is how women rate other women publicly, everyone's a 10, and privately. I'll go into more detail in an upcoming video on YouTube. For now, feel free to take a screenshot and use the chart yourself. Just make sure to credit me or I will sue. I'm also creating a comprehensive rating system to help everyone know their level. Once you know your score, just use this equalize chart to find your match. So assuming standard female delusion, a female 6 matches with a male she sees as 3.8, a female 8 matches with a male she sees as 6.5, and a female 2 probably has hobbies or an adorable fur baby. The standard female delusion chart can go a long way towards correcting female ridiculousness, but only if you're honest. If the standard female delusion chart makes you mad, stay mad forever. It's great for the algorithm. I'll be back soon with instructions for giving a fair rating. Until then, good luck. Do you like being approached in public by guys? It depends on what he looks like, probably, <laughs> like, to be a defined below average. Hey, like, just look around the park. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I go in your place. I'll that they want to sleep with, um, but but the amount the amount of men that would be willing is abundant. It's it's not hard for them. Um, women are in, inherently born with a value, uh, and I wish I wish more knew this. But essentially, if you just kept your virginity and stayed like relatively healthy, like if you just stayed relatively healthy, uh, just like you know, eat right, go to the gym, nothing too crazy but keep your sexual purity, like you probably have like multi-millionaires, if not billionaires, like lining up for you. What up guys?
guys, welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel and welcome to my whiteboard videos where I cover solutions to today's problems in society. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell, that way you're gonna be notified of my daily videos. Like the video on your way in, let's get started. So today, I wanted to talk about society's biggest problem ever. Now, I, I wanna tell you guys, this problem is so big that it causes everything wrong with society, okay? So I'm gonna write this on the whiteboard. Non-virgin women cause all of the world's problems. Now, before you shoot the messenger, let me just explain to you why that is. There's been different studies that show that when a woman sleeps around, she is less likely to stay married and be happily married. So essentially, when a woman, you know, let's just put some guys here. So when a woman has sex with a bunch of dudes, what happens next is she can't really bond anymore. So one day she gets married and boom, she's sad married because she misses the guys over here. Some guy, maybe this one, was her favorite. She says, ah, oh, I'm stuck with Bob. I wish I had Chad. Now, the issue is, you know, women used to just be unhappy and deal with it. But now we have a society where they say your happiness is so important. And even when she's in a marriage, these are like Timmy and Bobby right there. She says, I'm sad. I want to be happy. So she's actually given money to leave him. So she gets child support, alimony, whatever. She says, I am gonna leave my man. I don't care about my kids. All because I was a whore before and slept with these dudes. And mind you guys, the data shows that the biggest drop in marital happiness is actually going from one guy to two men. You know, a woman, and it's there's different studies that it's slightly different, but overall, a woman that's a virgin on her wedding day has an 80% chance of a happy marriage. When it gets to two guys, it drops to 50%. Now, not only is this woman paid to take his money, she's also paid to falsely accuse him of abuse and take his kids away for a lifetime. So she's over there. She's got Timmy and Turner. Now, what does this, what does this lead to? So I want to list out a couple things that seem to be caused by single mother home. The majority of the homeless are from single mother homes. The majority of criminals are from single mother homes. The majority of school shooters are from single mother homes. The majority of people with mental problems are from single mother homes. The majority of teen runaways are from single mother homes. And this is why we used to have institutions, social shame, and safeguards to protect women from ourselves. Because when the women are whores, it ruins society. Now they're saying one out of every three kids will be alienated from their father within the first three years of life. Now, mind you, when men raise children, it is not the same. They raise better kids. So we have two solutions here. They always say, Pearl, what's your solutions? Well, today, baby, I'm going through them. One, men should only marry virgins or men automatically get custody because crazy women that leave marriages should not be rewarded. And we get rid of the money that pays women to leave and just tell them to work it out like the boss bitch you are. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know your solutions for society. Like the video on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you next time. That's like the number one easiest way. Like by the time you turn 18, well, sadly, uh, most women when they turn 18, they're no longer virgins. Like that's the truth. Um, but like if, if, if a woman really wanted just like, you know, like a top tier, super successful man, this is all she has to do because why? Because this is what men really care about. Ho is someone that does it for attention. What up guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel and welcome to my whiteboard videos. Today, I am going to go over the hierarchy of boredom. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. That way you're going to be notified of my daily videos. So this last week, I decided that I wanted to know more about whores, sluts, hoes, nice ladies, and... Oh, I forgot to add one. Sorry. Ladies and wifey material. So this week we did a show where we really wanted to define the terms because... A lot of men out there cannot define what's a whore, what's a slut, what's a whole lot of the women. It's like, what is this? And I'd like to tell you guys, 
In 2023, if we go by a historical point of view, 95% of women would be whores. However, we are in 2023, so we got to adapt to the time. So I, I surveyed some men to see what they thought. The definition that we came up with was a whore is someone that has sex for money or does slutty things for money. A slut is someone who does it for sex. And a hoe is someone that does it for attention. So we went through some scenarios as a class. A whore is an OnlyFans worker, a stripper, a hooker, or an escort. I think I spelled escort wrong, wrong but never mind that. A slut is a woman cheats on her boyfriend one night stand because what's she doing it for? Next, we have a hoe. Now, this is a girl, ass pics on the gram, okay, or 15 plus bodies. Now, okay, guys, there's been a lot of dispute. Some guys are saying, no, it's way less than that. I, I just ask the people. I just, I just report the news. Here. Let me know if there's anything else we should add to the top three. But that's what we got for now. So then we have a lady. So a lady can have roughly five to 14 bodies, okay? But she cannot have gotten these through one night stands. So no one night stands. You can only have gotten the bodies. You maybe you got ghosted, took an owl, but you could still be a lady. You have five to 14 bodies. Now let's define a nice lady. Zero to five bodies is a nice lady. And wifey is a virgin, is wife material. So now that we have some definitions, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a hierarchy of whoredom. Now, I'm just repeating back to you what the markets. Don't shoot the messenger, okay, ladies? All right, so here we have the least desirable. Here we have the most desirable and most rare. So what is gonna go on the least desirable level? in terms of sluttiness. This is the hierarchy of whoredom. All right, so at the bottom, we have hookers. Now, there's many names for these ladies. Hookers, um, escort, escorts, um, street walkers, night walkers. But at the end of the day, they're selling for money. We have porn stars. Now, because they're not just straight selling sex, they have less partners. But porn stars are above hookers. Only fans, ladies, you're not at the bottom, but you're not far from it. You're just above hookers, porn stars, then only fans. Next, we have strippers. Now, a stripper can go on to live a normal life because there's no, maybe she didn't sell sex for money. I mean, we all know what goes on in the strip clubs, but maybe she just stripped. So then, now this is the most disputed one. I asked the men, what's worse? Would you rather take a single mother or a woman with a high body count. Now, we all know that there's single mothers with high body count, like, we all know, but I, I said you have to pick one. And the men picked, drum roll please, high body count. If you sleep with too many people, you are barely better than a stripper. Now, what number this is is very disputed across the board. Um, I, I've heard numbers like around 25, it switches, they'd rather take a single mom. I've had some guys say 10, I've had some guys say 30. I don't know when it switches exactly for men, but let's just say somewhere between 15 to 30, they'll take the kid over the bodies. Don't shoot the messenger. Now remember, if you have both, you're lower. But if you just have a kid and not the body count, you're slightly above the horse, but not by much. I mean, hoes, these are hoes, maybe sluts, maybe sluts, the hoes and the sluts. And remember, level of ladies are mid body count. So. Again, I've had some dispute, but what I've gotten is like five to like 15 roughly men will take that over the kid, but it switches around there. Then we have low body count, which nowadays is like under 10, under five. It, again, please don't shoot the messenger. I'm just repeating back what I've been told. And at the top, virgin. This is the hierarchy of whoredom from least slutty um, let me know if there's anything I forgot, guys. You know, I love giving these lessons to you. Uh, and I have right here on this list, like, what, what do men want and what do women want? Um, so I'll just start going through the list and then we'll, we'll catch up with that point. Okay. Um, okay. I have a virtuous woman seeking Christ's forgiveness. Okay. So that's like getting back to that, that point in the beginning where we're realizing that, like, we kind of grew up in, like, a messed up world. And I think uh, there are those that have, like, realized they've made mistakes. Uh, and so there's there's women that have like actually seeked 
Christ's forgiveness and, and, and healing, sexual healing of their womb and all this. Um, and that, that's beautiful. I definitely uh, um, commend that, commend that. I think, that, I think that's beautiful. I wish, uh, I con congrats on going on that journey and, 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 and um, saving yourself and, and purifying yourself and healing yourself and um, learning from your mistakes. And hopefully uh, you can inspire other women and hopefully inspire the younger generation to not make the same mistakes that you've made. And a, a big part of humbling yourself is admitting like, yeah, I made a mistake. Um, and just learning from that, learning from that. Like it's, uh, it's just learning from our failures. I've made mistakes and failures as well, but can we admit it? I can gladly admit mine. Um, and the best thing to do is for the youth is to teach them, be like, hey, I messed up. Like when it comes to pornography, I tell young men all the time, like, don't get into it like it will rob you of your childhood of your teenage years of your young adulthood don't get into it and and and, and that's hopefully these young men can learn from my mistakes and not waste their time and their energy and get into a deep depression and a rut and i hope women that have gone down this 304 route uh, and learned that it's not the way that they can tell these younger women like hey don't do this like Feminism is a lie. She gets up and she says, Patrick, this is very hard for me to say this. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why it's very hard. I said, what's that? She says, ever since in high school, I wanted to prove to men that I can beat them. So when I graduated high school and college, I opened up my salon. We do very well. I've made millions of dollars. My people and my work uh, that, that work at the salon, they do very well for themselves. I drive a nice car, I have a nice house, I have money, I have millions, I don't worry about any of that stuff. You know what decision I made last night? I said, what's that? She says, I want a husband. I no longer want to compete with men. Mm -hmm. I need them. And I'm like, what? She's saying this in front of 2,000 people with her sister sitting right next to her. Wow. And now she's getting emotional. How many 65-year-old women do we have to hear saying that I march with the feminist movement and I bought into the fact that men are the enemy? I've never been married. I'm alone and I'm miserable and I wish I would have never bought into that philosophy. You keep telling men that you can do, we can do it without them, that it's, that it's something to be upset about if they open a door, if they pull out a chair, that we don't need them in our society. And then we're surprised when they don't want to commit and when they don't want to do the things that, that, they, sh that they should be encouraged to do. We need masculine men like we need feminine women. And being a feminine woman does not mean taking your clothes off on the internet. I don't know who needs to hear that. sexual freedom liberation movement lie it's not the path of happiness um but it takes a lot of humbleness to be able to do that and to admit that um and then uh okay uh what i have right here is virgins and sigma slash alpha males okay what was i thinking on this one <laughs> but essentially um for me personally as a male what i find most attractive in a woman is her sexual purity uh, and i think men in general what they really want is they want someone that's youthful sexually pure and just simply kind like it's as simple as that like are you kind uh are you pure like do you not have a huge body count with uh sexual trauma emotional baggage all this stuff and um it, it's very simple what we want and like i said like if a girl played her card right, her cards right by the time she was 18 she would be perfect <laughs> like but that's the problem is it's so rare now that's a unicorn that's a unicorn to find like in this day and age uh, an 18 year old in the west that's still virgin that's pretty much a unicorn that's very rare nowadays and it's sad it's like a depiction of like what's going on in the family uh in the family where are the fathers where are the fathers protecting their daughters? Like, wh why are they not teaching them the right ways to live? And so then I have like a, a Sigma alpha male. And so for those who don't know, the Sigma male is kind of like the lone wolf. Um, and it, essentially the tiger, really. The, ti the, name, the name really suits me because tigers are solo. They're solo out in the jungle. But the alpha male is more like the lion. He's the, he's the, the head of the pride. 
and, and, and kind of the, the leader of the pack or the, the wolf in, in the front of the pack. And so you get the lone wolf and then the, uh, the leader of the wolf pack kind of thing. And, and both, both are beautiful traits. And I feel like uh, real men on their path will fit into one of the two categories or maybe a blend of both. Um, okay, the next point I have is men age like fine wine and women age like milk. So wine takes a long time to get better. And uh, if you, uh, I've been doing a lot of research into this, watching these videos, but it seems across the board, most women prefer older men. Um, they just seem to age like wine. It seems like men peak in their forties or maybe 50 years old. That's like when they peak. Uh, and they usually are pretty set. Like they got usually pretty successful at that point, financially set. Um, for whatever reason, like they still keep looking better. But uh, women, well, milk is best when it's fresh. And, uh, and then as it gets on, it kind of gets rotten. And essentially, as far as I can tell, women kind of peak at 25 years old. At 25 years old, they've, it's pretty much downhill. And it seems about the average is at 30, they, uh, they hit what's quote unquote hitting the wall. And they realize that at age 30, they're not getting nearly as much attention as they were 10 years prior when they were 20 years old. And, and so uh, they thought when they were 20, in their early 20s, 25, that all this attention and validation that they were getting from all these men was going to last their entire life. And then when they hit around 30, their early 30s, maybe for some it's their late 30s, all that attention stops, um, drastically drops. And they quote unquote hit the wall and they realize, whoa, okay, uh, I don't have as many options now. Now my biological clock is ticking. Um, my eggs are drying up. I may not be able to have children unless I find a man. And usually they get kind of desperate and have to rush and they settle for one of these uh, beta male Ahab simps, um, one of these like quote unquote nice guys because they spent their 20s, you know, like chasing the alphas, chasing the sigmas or the quote unquote bad boys. I, I'm not condoning that. They, they usually have horrible morals and behavior, but for whatever reason, women are into that. They're, they're into like cheaters and criminals and, it's uh, strange, I don't get it. Women like bad boys, but how much do they like the bad part? This is Zones, it's my map of what men want from women and what women want from men. This is what causes attraction, and this is what causes comfort. Now the girl in this video is clearly having some feelings because of bad boy stuff. And I have had arguments about whether or not that is enough to cause attraction. Eventually, I'm going to break zones down into the constituent elements of each one of these variables. And then also demonstrate how they relate to each other. This is obviously going to be much harder for women. They have a lot more variables to deal with. One thing I'm working on is how women decide if a guy is attractive. I've been told that for masculinity to be attractive, looks must be there first, and I'm not sure if that's true. I think these things are attractive to women on their own. In other words, if a guy is not that good looking, but he's a real badass, that is good enough for some girls. It seems to be good enough for her. Women, on the other hand, they have two sets of criteria that they evaluate men on. They have good guy stuff and bad boy stuff. And this is one of the reasons that there's so much confusion in our culture about what women want, because they say they want good guy things, and then they actually go with men who have bad boy things, but the truth is they want both, and you don't have to choose. In our language, we say, I'm a good guy, or I'm a bad boy, or I'm good, or I'm bad, or this is, but really you can be both of these things. And in order to be both of these things, you have to maximize your physical attractiveness, face, body, height, voice, all the things that you can do, lose weight, get muscle, maximize it, and maximize your masculinity. Dominance, power, confidence, smoothness, which is, I'll explain that later. Smoothness is basically how well you understand women. If you can approach a woman and you know what it is that she responds to, she's going to go, oh, you understand women. That's your smooth. That requires some more unpacking, and women also respond to dark triad traits. In psychology, the dark triad represents three personality traits, narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. People scoring high on the three traits are more likely to commit crimes and create severe social problems in society, families, and organizations. If we were to ask the three who has the darkest personality, 
The narcissist would say, me. The psychopath would say, I don't care. And the Machiavellian would say, it's whoever I want it to be. If your mind was programmed to be impulsive, aggressive, and selfish, you are also more likely to abuse drugs, feel excluded, suffer from depression, or end up in jail. This is a big difference between men and women. Men do not need women to have any evil stuff, any bad boy stuff. We don't need bad girls. Some guys like bad girls, but that's a personality thing. They, men in general don't need girls to be bad. Women need men to be at least somewhat bad. You gotta be dangerous. You have to have the ability to be dangerous. Not necessarily go to jail, but you have to be capable of it. And that will boost your bad boy score. Which is what you really want. You would, it's better to be all bad and no good than it is to be all good and no bad, because then you end up in the friend zone. For whatever reason, they may not admit it, but they, t they seem to have an attraction towards uh, that kind of behavior. Um, and so, uh, then I have this thing right here, community cow. So I, I'm here in India, so it's, a, it's appropriate. There's cows everywhere. And it's like, okay, why would one of these, like, why would the men in these communities own a cow? Um, when there's a community cows, there's community cows everywhere. If, if they want some fresh milk, just go to the cow. It's just, it's, it's free. Why would, why would they take the time to buy the cow, AKA marry it? Like marry a woman. Why, why would you marry these women when they're giving out the free milk, AKA sex? Uh, and so that's what a lot of these women are. They're community cows. They're just, um, they're just giving out free milk to all the men in the village. Um, and it's like, why would any of the men buy the cow when the cow is giving out free milk? It's pretty silly. And, and that's how, that's how most women are. Again, you might piss a lot of people off to hear that, but it's the truth. Um, this is why prior to the 1960s, women were patient and they're like, no, nah, put a ring on my finger and then, uh, and then we can do the deed kind of thing. Um, but now, now that's gone out the window because of abortion, birth control, contraceptives. Um, then you have the analogy of the key and lock, and it's like um, a lock, you know, like go on a door, a lock that's, uh, or a locker room, you know, okay. Um, a lock that's opened up by any key, like if you have any key and you can just open it up, it's a crappy lock. Like if any key in the world can open up your lock and it just opens right up, it's a crappy lock. However, um, a key that can open up any lock that it wants is a master key. And, and this is saying that essentially a male that can sleep with any woman any woman in town like wants to sleep with him he's a master like a master key and he's opening up all these women uh, whereas a woman on the other hand where every dude in town is opening up her she's the bad lock in this example and you can just you can just see like it's not the same it's not the same for men and women it's two different things for one, for the male, like he's got to have confidence, charisma. He's got to have game. He's got to have money. He's got to be have his life in order. All these things. He's got to be working on himself, improving himself. Usually, he's got to be fit and healthy. Like he's got to have a lot going for him. Uh, whereas the woman, she just has to look young, like relatively fit. Like not even that. You don't even have to be relatively fit. Like you just kind of just got to be a woman. <laughs> like and. Um, you don't really have to do anything. Like, like like I said earlier in this example, like you play your cards right and at 18, if you're still a virgin, uh, kind, and you're young because you're 18, like you could have multi-millionaires lining up. And if you play your cards right and, and tell them, no, I'm waiting until marriage. And like they, 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 these multi-millionaires might be like, well, I'm gonna do a prenup, a prenuptial agreement and be like, no, be like, I've been saving my virginity for the right man and it's a fair trade. Like I get half your assets. Like get your, I get your last name and I get ownership of half your assets in exchange. You get my body. Like that, 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 like the woman, the, the 18 year old woman in this example. Um, and that to me, that's a fair exchange. Like that's a fair exchange. She has been saving herself for that man. And I think she deserves half his assets in exchange. He, gets her body like that's kind of the exchange there i know it's not like a transaction transactional type of thing but nowadays a dude that marries a woman that has a hundred person body count 50 person body count 20 person body count even 10 like and she gets half his assets like statistically if you look at the statistics i think it's like women that have a, 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 a just a five person body count statistically 
they will get divorced. They will never have a successful marriage, statistically. Women leave, women divorce men 70 to 80 percent of the time. I, I would argue in relationships, it's probably similar. Men aren't leaving, women are. So to a guy's point of view, he's going to commit to this girl. And what does he get? He doesn't get purity anymore. You know, these these hoes. You know, he doesn't he doesn't get youth anymore. So he doesn't get either of those things. A lot of times she already has a kid. So so he, he's not fulfilling his mating strategy. On top of that, even if he does find a good woman that maybe has the qualities he's looking for, he, she was going to want him to marry her. And what does he get out of that? Oh, she can leave and take half and take my kid. And she's paid to take my kids away from me. She, she gets more money if she takes my children. And so from the men's point of view, they're just kind of like, F it. Because like women aren't wives nowadays. And what do they get out of it? But like, you know Men are logical. Sorry. They're logical people. And so they're, they're thinking, does the benefit outweigh the cost? And like, I just think as women, we have to look at ourselves and say, the benefits we bring nowadays don't outweigh the cost for most men. Did you know the divorce rate in Mexico is only 8.6%? Less than one in 10 marriages end in divorce. Did you know that in Mexico, 75% of married women are married to the man they lost their virginity to? You see, when we look at longitudinal studies across the life of a woman, a woman who marries a man she lost her v-card to has an 83 percent chance of rating her marriage as happy loving fulfilling and satisfying and less than one in ten chance that marriage ends in divorce that same woman with a body count of five has a 23 percent chance she rates her marriage as happy loving fulfilling and satisfying and a greater than six in ten chance that she files for divorce you see we hear all the time about how a woman's body count and past matters so much to a man it matters an awful lot more to you women. You've just been lied to and told it doesn't. And you should probably ask yourselves why. Women are now being blind to this reality. So they're thinking like, oh, I could be feminine and I could do all everything else. But if my body count is high, guys just have to accept that. That's just guys being picky. No, it's nasty what you're doing. Guys cannot stomach women who have no dignity and self-respect like this and no respect for their bodies and are loose with their bodies with a whole bunch of men, it sickens them. They are not putting a ring on that. And I, unless you, I would say you have the power of Jesus Christ to forgive you and help you heal in all this, uh, maybe that would be different. But most women are not on that path. They're not open, into, they're not open to that. They're not willing to humble themselves and repent and, 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 and realize that they've made mistakes and they've done wrong. So this next example is tape on the wall. So if you get some fresh tape and you stick it on the wall, it's gonna stick really well. And then you, if you peel it off and you stick it a second time, it's still gonna stick, but not as strong as the first time, but it'll still stick. Peel it off again and a third time, it's gonna stick, but not as strong as the first time or second time. Well, you keep doing that and you get to five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I, seriously, it may sound like a lot, y'all, but I've been watching these videos on YouTube. Like, I would say most women are probably close to 50. Like, they're probably in their 30s, the 50s for body counts. Um, it's it's getting out of control. And they're like that piece of tape where it's like, you take a piece of tape and put it on the wall and you tear it off and you put it on 50 times, it's not going to stick. By number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, it's not going to have the same durability and stickiness as that first one, that first one being a virgin. I do believe that female body count is really important to men. And I think if I were a guy, I would care about it as well. Here's why. I think that women who, I think that it's a sign of disrespect to yourself to not treat sex as something that has value. And I think that guys still value purity in women. I don't think they have to be virgins, but I think they value women who have been hesitant to put their bodies out there with everyone. In other words, they don't bed hop. Maybe they had a couple of partners, a few partners, but it was people that they really cared about. It was committed relationships. There was monogamy involved. It was a sign of self-respect that those women had because they weren't willing to just sleep with anyone. I watch these videos of girls now, young women, early 20s, and you'll ask them, what's your body count? And they'll say, oh, I don't know, 10, 13, 15. That's gross to me as a female. Do you think men's body counts make a difference? I know a lot of men who have high body counts and they come off as very hurt. And it kind of becomes hard for him to have a new experience because every experience he has, he correlates to a past experience. I've seen that turn a lot of men bitter. Mm. So I honestly think body count matters with a man as well. When a man has slept with too many women, to me, he'd be so hurt because he's seen the mortality in women just deplete from his eyes with every woman he sleeps with. No, you know what? That's actually a very good 
good point because I do know a couple guys like that. Like they'll pretty much sleep with anything walking. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And at some point you do lose, like you lose the respect for women. Scarcity and value are the same thing. Why is gold valuable? Because it's hard to find gold. If there's gold all over the streets, it was on every street corner, it wouldn't have a value, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a girl that everyone's had, your value is going to be destroyed. Your value as a woman comes from the fact yeah. that people want you and cannot have you. Peace. Your value does not come from the fact that everyone wants you and everyone's had you. Mm -hmm. So the, the uh, number one thing a man's looking for is a woman who can stand next to him that every single man wants and not a single man can say, I've had. If you're a woman and you just keep on getting pumped and dumped by dude after dude after dude, you're like in jaded Vietnam War vet. The first three people you kill, you're like, oh man, I feel terrible. But after you kill 50 people, you're the guy with the M60 in the helicopter just like mowing people Blank down. Staring. Yeah. Just, that's just, what you do. Exactly. And so what that's what's happened right now is that these chicks are jaded like vets of like the horror war <laughs> you know and it's so funny because we have this problem now where like all these soy boys are in control of all these social media platforms except for rumble and they are pushing this agenda onto these girls uh it will stick very strong and it's gonna be hard to peel that off that first time it's gonna hurt and and, and she's gonna have emotional trauma emotional baggage usually sexually transmitted demons and diseases uh, there's also this study, I don't have it written down here as well, but essentially they say that uh, when a man uh, ejaculates inside of a woman, the sperm goes to her brain. And if I remember correctly, like, I think it stays in her brain for life. Did you know that every time a woman has a one night stand, a part of her sexual partner lives inside her forever? Discover the mind blowing truth about male DNA in women and how it's shaping our understanding of intimacy, love and the human brain. Hello and welcome to our channel, where we explore topics that are not for the faint-hearted. Today, we will be discussing a fascinating yet controversial topic about male DNA living forever in women after making love. Yes, you heard it right. I know this might sound bizarre, but research has shown that during sexual intercourse, male DNA can enter and remain inside the female body, even after the man is long gone. For years, scientists believed that once a woman was impregnated, the male DNA would disappear after the baby was born. However, recent research has shown that male DNA can be found in a woman's blood, brain, and other organs long after the baby is born. In fact, male DNA has been found in women who have never given birth, leading scientists to conclude that intercourse is the primary mode of transmission. Now, let's get into the nitty-gritty. During mating, semen contains sperm cells that carry male DNA, which can enter a woman's reproductive system and potentially fertilize an egg. However, even if the sperm cells do not fertilize the egg, male DNA can still remain inside a woman's body for years. In fact, a study published in PLOS One found that male DNA can be found in a woman's brain for decades after intercourse. Microchimerism is the term used to describe this presence of a small number of cells in an individual's body that originated from a different individual. Another fascinating aspect of male DNA living forever in women is the potential for accumulation. In other words, the more partners a woman has, the more male DNA could potentially live on inside her body. The PLOS One study found that women who had multiple sexual partners had a higher incidence of male DNA in their brains compared to those who had only one sexual partner. The researchers hypothesized that this could be due to male DNA from previous partners residing in the body and being transferred to the brain during subsequent sexual encounters. Like she will forever for the rest of her life have a like a biological connection to that man. She'll have a spiritual soul tie to that man. And that's why it's like I've said on my channel, like I think it's I, I think I'd be a simp to marry any woman that has a body count higher than zero. Uh, because she'll most likely have these soul ties and this emotional baggage from all the men she slept with. And personally, I don't want to deal with that. If she's going to get my millions of dollars, now, I may not be there at this moment, but I would not be surprised in the future just because my dedication to success that I will accumulate a lot of uh, financial assets. And I would gladly share that with my God-loving wife. Um, if she's sexually pure but if she's got a racked up a huge body count it's gonna be hard for me to trust her uh just because you know you look at the statistics and when it when it gets to like five like a five person body count which is not a lot for this day and age 
statistically, the marriage will end in divorce and she will get half of the, the assets. And so I would have to sign a prenuptial agreement. I just like, I, I would have to protect myself uh, because the court system is uh, slanted against men. Uh, and then you look at um, the, the statistics as well for, um, because a lot of this, when it, when it goes to divorce, uh, usually the women get the children and that's just how it is. That's just what it is. You look into it uh, when, when a, a family gets divorced, uh, the court usually almost always sides with the female. And uh, a lot of these statistics, like you look at prisons, I heard it was like something like 75% of uh, people in jail are from single mother homes. Uh, like most crimes, like criminals, like well, it, it, they were raised in single mother homes. Like the father wasn't there. The father wasn't there to guide them. And just like, uh, like a lot of like mental health, like people that have mental health issues, like a lot of problems come from the father not being in the, in the picture. And it's really sad, but the, the, the way the system is set up is to keep the father away. And that's, that's like why a lot of women are acting the way they act is because they don't have a good fatherly role model in the picture to tell them no, to be like, no, like this man is not good for you. Or like boy or whatever. A lot of these quote unquote men act like boys, but you need a fatherly figure to tell these, like their daughters be like, no, like this guy's behavior is horrible. He's only with you to sleep with you. He doesn't want to marry you. He doesn't want to be your husband. Like, no, you're like, get away from my daughter kind of thing. They, they, the father's not in the picture to protect them. I mean, yes, the mother protects to a degree, but not to the same level that a father does. Like a fa there's this fatherly love and protection that's very stern. And when something needs to be said, it's said and it slices and it, it's gonna hurt her feelings. But if it's coming from the father, it's usually for the right reasons and it's to protect her. And, 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 and sometimes uh, she needs this. And, I, and I, I heard an analogy the other day where I was like, okay, uh, this father was with his daughter and, uh, and not even an analogy, it was a story I was reading. And that essentially uh, the, the dad was telling her about like, hey, like if you sleep around and then one day you find a man that you're gonna marry and you're out together and, um, and then that her like fiance goes to the restroom and there's uh, like three other men in the area that have like slept with the girl and they they follow the, the fiance to the bathroom and they start like laughing and joking about like, yo we all banged her first kind of thing like the dad was like do you think he's still gonna marry you after learning about that because he was saying like men joke about that kind of stuff men joke about like who they've slept with kind of thing and 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 the, and the daughter in the scenario she was saying like it was a kind of a wake-up call that like um she she didn't want her future husband to have to go through something like that the embarrassment of something like that that why like it's, like it's it's like why they say like body count doesn't matter but like you go around and it's like it's like women hide it or they lie about it. a lot of them lie about their body counts or they try to hide it or they're like oh it doesn't matter and no high value man desires a woman with a high body count but how would they know about their high body count you, a girl there's... can lie that's true yeah, a man can, can they lie have, they have certain symptoms there's... do i give off that energy high body count you're asking the wrong question just <laughs> be honest does it does it give that off no comment Brian. Oh, you're asking me. Yeah, you're I'm asking, asking both of you. I don't think you have a high one, but I don't think you have a low one. What either. is high to you? How old are you, 21? Yeah. I don't think it's over 20. Is it over 20? No. How long have y'all been together? Three years. You guys know each other's body count? Yeah. What's yours? One. Is that correct? Yeah. Are you sure it's one? Yeah. Only him? Yeah. You don't know how many boyfriends you had? No. No. <laughs> what the hell? It's over 10. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. We're getting mar married. There's no secrets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, we are going to get these young ladies' um, opinions on it. So to start, guys, I actually want to start with what do you think the average body count is for, let's say, a 22-year-old in today's day and age? Um, maybe like between 10 and 20. Wow, 10 and 20? I think, I think yeah. so, yeah. Wow, okay. Uh, what do you think? I'm so about seven. Seven? Mm. I yeah. reckon 10 to 20 as well. Yeah. 10 to 20. Yeah. For a 22 year old. Well, like, it, de it depends on relationships yeah. as well, because if you've been in a long term relationship, mm. then it's going to be lower than someone else who's always been single. I'm just, do you guys know your friends' body counts? Do they tell you? I feel like you have, but I actually can't remember. 
I don't think it's a big thing that matters. How high would be too high of a body count for a girl to where you would think guys might reconsider getting married to them, right? Where you're like, maybe guys would be like, that's a little too high. What, can we get a number? I think more than 20. More than 20? Yeah, I think more than 20. Like about marriage, more than 20, yeah. What about you? I'd say like 100. A woman that's pure, who hasn't had sex with a bunch of people, you know, body count under five, under 10. It's rarer than Bitcoin, I swear to God. It is a, it is a gem. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 31. She is a, a jewel in the crown of a man's head. She is worth more than gold. It is yes. proven that with the number of sexual partners that a woman has mm -hmm. before marriage, it exponentially increases the likelihood of divorce. No, you're right. The more, Even with just one partner and two, like low body counts. Yeah, the more premarital sexual partners you have, the greater likelihood of reporting relationship dissatisfaction, the higher likelihood of infidelity, higher likelihood of divorce. But the way the dating landscape is, is that men are not really incentivized to commit because women will have sex with a dude on the first, mm -hmm. second, and third date so women dictate whether there is a hookup culture or not yeah and I don't think men or women are particularly satisfied with status quo the reason why they're hiding it and lying about it is because it does matter they know it matters um, and they try to ignore it but the truth this is a truth channel and your body count does matter and, it, and it's not the same for men it's just the reality a lot of them are gonna be like oh it's a double standard and it's like yo uh, men have different preferences and women have different preferences and a lot of people are going to say i'm discriminatory i'm discriminatory towards women and it's like no this is a personal preference i prefer women that are young like 18 um like 19 20 21 22 whatever uh youthful um and sexually pure and just kind simply kind That's like, like quote unquote good girl uh which is kind of a unicorn today to actually find like a truly humble like you know like god loving young woman like Quite, that's very rare uh, and what do well, what do women want on the other end they want someone that's tall physically fit financially successful usually it's like six figures six feet tall um, sometimes older like more mature kind of things like these are their preferences women have the across the board pretty much the same preferences tall fit lots of money confident uh, funny like kind of thing like these kind of things um, and it's like, but when men state their preferences that they want virgins, they want young women, they want women of our kind, it's discrimination, it's discriminatory. And it's because these 304s don't like it. They don't like it because they know they're not that. And, uh, and so it's easier to just get upset at me uh, and just say like, I'm, I, I'm like misogynistic and blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, I don't really care. Uh, this is a truth channel. And so I'm just gonna say the truth because young men need to hear it, young women need to hear it middle-aged men and women, old men and women, everyone needs to hear it. Uh, uh, and I would say like most aren't gonna take it in because um, it's, it's not what society says. It's easier to just be like, ignore me and just be sexually free, get on your birth control, get on Tinder, go sleep with a bunch of dudes and it's like learn the hard way. Or maybe I'm right and I can save you some pain and time. Um, so let's keep on going down this list. Um, okay, so I, what I have right here, women want a man with status, money, wealth, stature, confidence, humor, good looks, power. Um, that power part, that, that sometimes can be like your bad boy criminal. Like for whatever reason, they're attracted to power. And, and, and sometimes like these are like bad men. And uh, it's kind of, it's sad. It's sad to see that women um, are attracted towards that kind of behavior. Um, not all of them, of course, um, but you just research it. They're into it. Uh, they may not admit it, but yeah okay uh men want youthfulness purity and kindness uh i'll just say i'll speak for all men here we don't want boss babes <laughs> we don't care you you might be a boss babe uh i wrote we do not care at all i i find not, i actually find it kind of unattractive it's a little too masculine for me um and so it's like so what the feminist movement has done is they've they've like criticized like these masculine traits found in men and then the women have just become them themselves. So they're, they're criticizing like, oh, like men have all the power and all the money and like all the, the top jobs, like this, what is it? The CEO, CFO, like like this, like, they call it like the C-class jobs or something like uh, doctors, lawyers, blah, blah, blah. And, and so, so now women have been fulfilling those roles and becoming boss babes, but then they're going home to empty homes. And a lot of them, like they don't have, they're not married, don't have kids, their eggs have dry, like dried up and it's like, you're too masculine 
like straight up. And um, I don't care that you make a bunch of money. Uh, I just, I, 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 I'm more into youthfulness, purity and kindness. I'll make the money, I'll take care of you, I'll protect you. I'll play that traditional male role. Um, I would love to do that, it would be my honor. Um, I, would, I would love to do that. Um, and to, to provide for the children, protect the children, all that. Uh, and then just be an awesome mom, you know? Just like uh, work in the garden, learn learn uh, herbs, like working like with certain herbs, like plant med, like not not the uh, psychedelic plant medicine, but you know herbal medicine, uh, like sewing, making clothes, uh, cooking, just like the stuff that's like awesome, like awesome stuff. Just being like uh, like and, uh, harmonious with nature and its surroundings, and like learning like just how to take care of us and be a, a raise awesome children, and it's like. I think these are the traditional role for women. And it's like, deep down, I think you'd love it. Like, I think I think they would love it rather than just being stuck in an office and listening to some boss give you orders. And it's like, it sucks. I've been, I, I've done, I've done the cubicle thing. It's absolutely soul sucking. I don't know why these women want to have a cubicle job, like soul sucking. Whereas like the joy that comes from raising a child is incredible. I know this because I'm an uncle of like six, six, six kids now um i'm not a father myself but just like i can just see the, the joy the joy that emanates from my nieces and nephews is incredible uh and, and 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 i think it's such a blessing for um my sister my sister's sister-in-laws uh to be mothers i think i think it's absolutely beautiful and they're all great mothers um i, I gotta say god's like blessed me with a really beautiful family and and uh and my, I got two brothers and a sister. They're all married. Um, they all have children. And yeah, it's actually pretty rare in this day and age to have like a full set of family. Everyone's married traditionally and having children. And, and it's like, I'm, only, I'm the only one left. And it's like, well, I'm just praying to God. And I'm just like, God, if it's your will, I'd gladly have a, a God-loving spiritual wife. Um, if not, it's monk mode. It's that saying, monk or married. And it's like, okay, well, um, well, if I don't get married, uh, just be a monk. And it's like, I'm, but I'm open to it. Uh, and I know God's probably got something lined up for me, but until then it's just monk mode. It's monk mode and saving myself and not sleeping around with these thoughts, these tricks and hoes and whores and thoughts and 304s, sluts, sleuths, skanks, hookers, prostitutes, Jezebels, only fan girls, and, uh, and being criticized by these beta male Ahab simps. <laughs> and and that's that's like 98 percent of society that's like majority of society maybe not 98 percent, but it's a big that's i just i that that top part i just listed a big chunk of society and then you have those that are pure saving themselves and those that have realized they have made a life of mistakes and they've been repentant and uh, they've been picking up their cross, following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, enduring until the end, uh, and seeking forgiveness and and, and and healing and all that. And it's like, if you're not in one of those two categories where like you've been saving yourself or you've learned from your mistakes and you and you're you're on the path of forgiveness and healing, it's like you fall into that category I just said. You either have a repentant heart and you're seeking the forgiveness of Jesus Christ to help you heal the, from the sexual trauma, from the pornography, from the promiscuality, or you had good parents, a good dad, a good mom, raised you right and told you wait until marriage. It's like one or the two. If you're not, if you're a woman and you're not in one of those two categories, like, like I'm genuinely not interested. I'm more so seeking the one that was just, doesn't have any emotional trauma, baggage or any of that STDs but who knows i don't i am not god um i am a son of god i'm a child of god <laughs> and uh and uh the the almighty creator has a plan for me and uh if it's to be with a girl that has a thousand person body count but she's humbled herself and i don't know maybe that gets into the whole mary magdalene thing um i've heard stories that mary magdalene wasn't really a prostitute uh but then because there's a lot of lies in the Bible. Um, but the, what the Bible says is that she was a prostitute. Um, and then essentially, like, she changed her ways. So there's, like, the whole Mary Magdalene scenario, if that's true. The other scenario is that it's not, and that she was pure, and she married Yeshua, and they had children and all that. And um, I like to think that she was just pure, to be honest, um, and that it was the Vatican, because most Christians don't realize this, but it's like, they love to bash the Vatican and the Catholic Church, but it's like, they wrote your Bible. The 66 books of the Bible came from the Vatican Catholic Church, your quote-unquote word of God. <laughs> it's like, 
they like can't make that connection, that realization. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Roman Empire, Roman Catholic Church, Vatican, Pope, all that lied about Mary Magdalene uh, because she was such a, uh, a beautiful role model, the divine feminine, divine feminine Sophia kind of thing. And uh, of course they would want to bash her, make her look bad kind of thing. So it wouldn't surprise me, the quote unquote conspiracy that Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute and that she was actually pure. Um, and you know, like, cause the Bible doesn't say uh, whether Yeshua got married or didn't marry. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say that he was not married and it doesn't say that he was. If I had to guess, he probably married Mary Magdalene. That's my best guess. Uh, and there are other scriptures outside of the Bible that do say that. Um, multiple of them. So uh, I know like, at least two or three that suggest that. Okay, uh, so next up on the list, we got what's called pair bonding. Essentially, the more, uh, I think this goes for men and women, um, but essentially the more men and women sleep around, they lose the ability to pair bond. Uh, it, it's like that piece of tape analogy. Uh, but I think this affects women more than it does men is that essentially it's like uh, they've, women, are just there's something about them. They're not meant to sleep with around, a lot, around with a lot of dudes. And I think it messes up something with their pair bonding. Uh, because most women initiate divorce. I think it was like something like 80, I might be pulling this out wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure it was like 80% of divorces are initiated by the, by the wife, by the women. Um, then there's the thing about sperm in the brain, essentially, I'm pretty sure it's in there for life um, or like seven years or something, something nuts. Uh, quote, we talked about quote unquote sexual freedom, that it's not free, it's sexual slavery, you're slave to your desires. Uh, hypergamy. All of the women are attracted to a very, you know, slim section of the men at the top, and they end up having like really low quality relationships with them. The green lines are the satisfying long term relationships, and the orange and red are the ones where it's like, well, I would be, you know, I would date him, but he doesn't want to date me. And, um, I mean, I, I think that's what you're asking there. It's like the, the experience of women using dating apps and walking around in the world, it's like just a very small number of the guys at the top who get those kind of looks. Right. And can you explain the, le the left side of your chart there? The left one is n n the way that men see women in the world, is that they're very willing to have relationships directly across with women that they have never met before. Like a male five walking around like on the subway will look at a female five and go, oh, maybe she's the girl for me, right? But a female five does not do that with a male five. Mm -hmm. it's, they're only going to be looking at yeah. the top guys that, if they haven't met them and don't know anything about them yet. So the dynamics of like you can only know so many men, right? The Next dynamics of attraction are heavily yeah. weighted towards just the most desirable guys. Word, word. D and did you have something also like another drawing that's somewhat related to this one? But you said that there's a bottom portion of men that are invisible. Yeah, um, I just sort of keep this thing around. It's a little joke that I tell where and this is there's a study that um, confirms this as well like they they watched women's brains on a brain scan and they said that with really unattractive men really low value men that they saw them as not even there that they didn't register people in their brains at all mm -hmm. so i've had this experience myself i used to drive for lyft and uber and you know girls with really good jobs and getting a lot of male attention would get in the car and they would talk to me like i was they would talk to each other in the back seat like i was not there they would say things that you would not say in front of a stranger Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, and I think uh, this is your cutoff here. So um, any final thoughts? And we'd be glad to have you back some other time. But uh, yeah, any, any final thoughts? Is there is there um, one piece of drawing that you really want to show us? I think, you know, they someone paid to say, you know, to go watch this video. This will show you everything you need to know. I've got a 23 minute video on this about this on YouTube called Zones. And it is, you know, go read the comments. Everyone says it's been very enlightening for them. Um, it's just, you know, it's a quick sure. look at what men and women value. And I'm hoping to use that to sort of fix the problems in the dating world as much as I can. Rock and roll, man. Well, hey, thank you for joining us. Uh, guys, go check out Homath on YouTube, TikTok. Right. Women are hypergamous, which means they meet across and up dominance hierarchies. And so yes. if you're a male who's successful in a given hierarchy, the probability that you're going to have additional mating opportunities is exceptionally high. It's an unbelievably good predictor of that. 
that hypergamy is a very uncomfortable discussion. Yes, some it people. certainly is. But That's yeah, a big one, though. It is. The, the idea that it defines women's sexual choices by the fact hmm. that they want beggar. Bigger, better. Hmm. They want well, what, someone who's more, okay. more successful, hmm. someone who's so, so higher on the social ladder than what they're accustomed to or what they have Yeah, now. well, what women do is, that, like, mate choice is a very difficult problem. So how do you solve it? Well, here's how women solve it. Throw the men in a ring. Let them compete at whatever they're competing at. Assume that the man who wins is the best man. Marry him. It's a biological solution. It, it's it a would, biological it would, solution, it would but it has a cost. The, what is the cost? Well, the cost is polygamy. Now, you're saying she's leaving because she's earning more. And no, I'm saying that she may be like, I'm not satisfied in this relationship because he has an issue with me earning more and I don't want to stay in this dynamic. So from from what I've seen in the guys, you can maybe correct. Like, you can tell me what you've seen because you guys, you know, I I see the girl side. (laughs) I I found when girls move up in in. My, making money they're around more men that mm-hmm. make more money than them so i think on some level they kind of wish they were with the men they were working with rather than their husbands mm-hmm. after all the time and effort expended to align with the criteria of hypergamy the payoff is not that a woman is ultimately provided security and material resources or even that a man is offered sex and a relationship the payoff is the growth and prosperity that redound to the man as a result what does this mean well a top 10 percent man can only indirectly benefit a woman and then only only if she can acquire and maintain access to the man. However, a top 10% man directly benefits himself. He directly benefits from being stronger and wealthier and higher status. These things are primarily good for him and at best only secondarily good for others. Even if much of his wealth and status are stripped from him by a divorce or a breakup, he remains the source of that value and he became the source of that value in the transformational process of becoming a top 10% man. The concept of hypergamy is the act of dating up or marrying up your socioeconomic class. Mm. Women do this. It's been stated that women will only be serious or date with men across or above them. Got you. Meaning yes. if a woman's making 50 grand, mm-hmm. she'll date a guy making 50 and all the way up. Agreed. She ain't dating some dude that's working the counter at McDonald's for $12 an hour. Facts? Facts. A guy, if he's making 50 grand, he'll date whatever yep. and whatever, yeah. like no matter what. Yep. Hypergamy is a big thing. And it's this idea that women, um, they always stay at their level or upgrade. They never downgrade. And that essentially like uh, if, they're, if they're dating a dude that's making 100 figures, essentially in the future, they will never date another dude that makes less than 100 figures or 100 figures, six figures, 100,000. Um, and essentially they just go up they, they either stay at their level or go up uh, and that and that's hypergamy or they, or they they might be someone with a hundred and then and they come across a dude that's making five hundred thousand and they jump ship they jump ship and they upgrade and now they're at the five hundred thousand dollar thing and then like you know a millionaire comes by jump ship they go to the millionaire and this is hypergamy where they will jump ship an upgrade they will upgrade and it's kind of like comes from this like survival thing now obviously not all women are like this but the ones that are like you know you know what i was saying at like the the thoughts the the 304s kind of thing the jezebels they'll jump ship they'll jump ship if like if they if they spent their whole 20s you know chasing the whole quote-unquote feminist sexual freedom thing and then in their 30s they realized their eggs were drying up and they had to settle for one of these uh beta male ahab simps um They'll dump him. They'll dump him and from hypergamy and upgrade. They'll upgrade. Uh, they only got with him just to have a baby uh, or because maybe he had some money and like was like, comfortable. They didn't really want to be with him, but their options that they had 10 years prior, five years prior are no longer there, uh, that, which they thought would be there forever. And so they had to settle and they had to hurry up and before their eggs dried up. And, uh, and now they're just kind of, you know, they're not really happy, and so uh, they'll jump ship, they'll leave him, or they'll just divorce him, if not leave, like, go for another dude. Uh, we talked about single mother homes and how, uh, and, and, and I know it's a struggle. I know a lot of them, like a lot of dudes are just like bad dads. There's a lot of bad dads there. They're, they're, they're not really dads. I, I, I've, I've met men 
uh, where they take no responsibility. They're, they're not in the picture. Um, and yeah, that's horrible. And so, so I know it's a struggle to take care of a, a son or a daughter uh, as a single mother. And um, it's just, it's a lot more difficult without that fatherly support. And, um, and there's just, it's just missing that divine masculine uh, to set the men straight to set the women straight, the young boys, the young girls straight and be like, cause that's the role of the father to be stern and be like, yo, no. I mean, I know a woman, a, a mom can do that too, but there's something about when the man, like, like a lion roars, like, it's like, whoa, like that was a, that was a roar. Like it, and, and I've done, I can do it. I can do it. I don't, it takes a lot to get me to that point, uh, to really get me where it's like, I gotta lay it down and say something. And there's something that uh, these men have, like that's just like it can send chills through you, and 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 that's that's what the father brings to the table. Like if, if a kid, their child messes up, like there's something in the father can he just like sets that kid straight. Um, and I know a woman can do that too. The mom can do that too. Um, I think it just comes more naturally to the father uh, to be very stern and like uh, like respected, like like it's a, like. Uh, the mother is more nurturing, loving, but the father brings in that like strict sternness where it's like, no, you don't do that. Um, and the kid remembers that it becomes like ingrained, like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. That upset dad. I'm not going to upset him again. Okay. Uh, and it's going from a place of love. It's a different way of fatherly love because they want to protect their children. They want their children to be right. They want them to be good, uh, like good humans. They like, that's what they, that's what they want for them deep down. Um, we get into abortion STDs essentially like a lot of women just like they're so promiscuous and then like they they quote unquote get pregnant they're just like oh just go to Planned Parenthood and kill the baby <laughs> it's demonic dude like and I and I know because back when I was an atheist and possessed uh, I that was my game plan I was like well she gets pregnant just like take plan B if plan B doesn't work just go kill the baby go have an abortion um, and now, now having my spiritual awakening, I'm like, damn, dude, I was so messed up in the head. I, I can't believe I thought that. STDs, I've talked about in the past how uh, sexually transmitted diseases are really, uh, they start off in the spiritual realm as sexually transmitted demons. It starts up as like a possession. And so when we have sex outside of marriage where it's not a holy matrimony ordained by God, it invites demons into the bedroom uh, because God is not ordaining it. God's not okay with it. And, and it breaks the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. And when we break any of the Ten Commandments, it opens a doorway into the demonic realm for possession. And ultimately that possession happens so that we can learn from our mistakes. And then of course, Jesus Christ can deliver us of those demons. And I've had my own deliverance, uh, specifically with the, the demoness Jezebel, the demoness Lilith, and the demon Ahab, uh, all sexually transmitted demons. Um, and that Jesus Christ has the power to cast those out. Why? Because he holds the keys of hell and death, which when he was crucified, he went down to the pits of hell for three days. He obtained the keys of hell and death from Satan. And so now Jesus Christ is the king of heaven, the king of earth and the king of hell. He's the king of all realms and dimensions. And that's why you can rebuke Satan, rebuke any demons. Everything in this existence has to bow down to the authority of Jesus Christ. That's just how this reality works. Any of these gods and goddesses, any of these deities, any of these angels, demons, everything in reality has to bow down and submit to Lord Jesus Christ because of what he did on the cross. That's just how it works. And so when you realize that and that he can forgive you of your sins and clear your bad karma and deliver you of these demons and sexually transmitted demons, it's very powerful. And essentially to, to stay quote unquote, like straight and clean is you got to John 14, 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so essentially you got to, you got to keep the commandments. And one of them is thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus Christ says, if you even look at a woman with lust, uh, you've committed adultery in your heart. And essentially, well, people are doing way beyond that. Um, they're, they're, they're acting it out. And so it's, it's, it's definitely inviting possession, uh, demonic possession when we get into that. Uh, we talked about hitting the wall. I got that written down. I think it's an accurate depiction of a natural phenomenon. Um, I think that women do reach a certain point in their life where their value, when I say value, I mean value in the eyes of men specifically, does decrease when they reach a certain age. In terms of fertility, obviously you're older, you're not as attractive, but 
also like you've had more life experience and I think the majority of men want a woman that hasn't had a lot of life experience because they want to build that life with you. When women are young, they think they have all the time in the world, right? You have all the time. You're 25. You're young. You look in the mirror. Your skin is fresh. You feel confident. You go out. You walk down the street and a whole bunch of guys whistling from the construction site. You're like, yeah, I got it. I got it. And then you're 42. You're exhausted. You're alone. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I did my whole life wrong. Right? It happens to a lot of women and increasingly happening to women more and more and more because of this feminist ideology of postpone, postpone, freeze your eggs, you don't need a man. And then they realize, oh, I, but I want one at 45 and they don't look like they did at 25 and they don't have all those assets that they once had and now the panic sets in. Hitting the wall typically starts in a woman's mind. It doesn't have a lot to do with her beauty. It starts with her mind. When she hits, say, 30, this is kind of when you start seeing it. If she's 30 years old and she's not married, she doesn't have kids, all of her girlfriends have kids, all of her girlfriends are married. She starts getting the societal pressure on her that I want kids, I want the husband, I want the house and the white picket fence and the dog. Yeah, I've been partying for the last 10 years. I've had a good time. So you see them on Tinder, you see them on Bumble, you see the buzzwords that I lived a good life, I partied a lot, now I'm ready to Everyone it's, has flaws, though, so nobody's perfect. We're looking at a number scale now. It's based on results. Oh, yeah. your results, outcomes. Well, what's, what sort of results? Like, how many people am I fucking? I how many ugly girls yes. can get cook. laid? The real question for women is, how many guys want to marry you? <laughs> at 27, a hardworking, honest man cannot even compete with the attention that you can get from the volume of men on social media. However, fast forward 20 years, <clears throat> at 47, you would give a limb to have an honest, hardworking man who dedicated his life to you instead of the volume of men who would give you momentary attention. Saying women peak probably around 25. Uh, there's this thing, I know it sounds nasty, but it's called quote unquote being run through. We all date, right? And like the fact that I have dated six people at the same time, and you know, maybe one of us has dated six people at different times. What really, what's the difference? You have seen and slept with the same amount of people. The timeline was just so different. the difference is that it sounds like an excuse to get ran through. I, think I mean, that's like a really disgusting term, and I think that <laughs> also um, that's kind of a really like harsh thing to say to women because you would only say that really to a woman right you wouldn't say that to a dude so, well I, I mean it's a little different but a man could also be sure but like you wouldn't i i wouldn't sit here and say that to you if you told me you were seeing six people i'd be like great good for you what i didn't own is the fact that you called me run through which i think is rude and also well, the fact so that i didn't was that me it that doesn't really matter. Me. That but, but either way, you repeated it. And also, the well, fact... The truth, oh, Brian. I, I disagree with you. <laughs> oh, I th it's maybe I came from Los Angeles, and, the, you know, you see guys that are, like, 39, 36, still in the club. That's not a good look, right? For me. When do guys hit their prime? In oh. my humble opinion, I think at it's 40s and up... 40s and up with experience. But when it comes to dating, like what, what men are attracted to? What would, what would men say that a woman's prime is? So you, sexy. I'm saying early 20s. So if, if we're talking early 20s. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Boom. So why would a guy in his 40s, in his prime, not want a woman in their prime? Where it's like, uh, like a woman when she's 30 and she's been in living a whole promiscuous life, it's called being run through. And it's just like, any high value dude, sigma male, alpha male, isn't wanna gonna, usually not gonna wanna marry her unless she's like had a very super repentant heart and like turned around and learned from her mistakes, which like I said, most women don't wanna do that. Most women don't wanna humble themselves and admit that they made mistakes and were wrong about their past. And, um, and, and I have not a double standard. I'll get into that section. We talk about sexual freedom is not empowering. It is uh, degrade, I have it's degrading. I say like every notch that you have on your body count is essentially like a woman is losing her value and i kind of mentioned it earlier but essentially that like uh women are born with their value um 
men have to earn it. Men have to earn their value. They have to prove themselves in this world. Whereas like 18 year old girls, like super high value, 18 year old male, boy, no, he's not high value. He's got to work five, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, build muscle, earn money, uh, build stature, status, prove himself in this world and becomes a lot more attractive. Whereas the 18 year old female, she has value right there just because just because uh that's just that's just the nature of reality um and so i i, I so if you, if you can see that you can see that women are born with their value and the challenge for them is to learn how to say no they got to say no uh which which most are not doing uh and, and then you look at well what do men really want and it's like it, it's like, as i said in here is essentially the, essentially they want the purity they want kindness and youth, that's really what they want. They don't want boss babes. They don't care that you make a bunch of money. We, we really don't. Whereas on the other hand, women want that in a man. They, they want that in a man. Women don't care so much about a male's sexual purity, his youthfulness, or I've got some angry monkeys here. That was absolutely hectic and nuts, dude. I don't know what just happened there. These these men were behind me, and I think they pissed the monkeys off. These monkeys just went ballistic, dude. And one of them came after me, scratched my back. And like, fortunately, I had my um my motorcycle helmet. I had to, like wave it around. Like, dude, they were like, they were trying to come at me. Um, I don't know if these the men were messing with them. Uh, cause I'm just chilling there on the rock, uh, and I don't know, uh, maybe the, <laughs> maybe this is karma for this video, I don't know, <laughs> cause I know this video is probably gonna piss a lot of people off, but, um, that's just what White Magic Tiger Truth Channel does, is sometimes the truth pisses people off, but I feel like, let me know y'all, like, let me know, like, am I hitting on some truth here? Uh, cause I feel like I am. Um, yeah, I feel it in my heart, honestly, deep down I feel it in my heart, I'm working on it, like, getting this message out and like being compassionate and kind but also being like yo like women like your behavior is unattractive same with the men it's not just the women it's the men too i i, I that's why i practice celibacy i lead by example um and I, but i'm just saying like it's different for the women that's what i'm just saying like it's different for the women and like, that's just the it's just how reality is and if they stop and they learn how to say no well then the men are going to step their game up and be like damn well i want to get laid but i essentially i got to marry her and it's like they got to change their whole lifestyle if, if, if women if you set the bar to being like no wait till i'm married it will change the game because then men have to raise their standards and be like damn i have to marry you and then i'm probably gonna be a dad so i gotta get my life in order and make money and blah 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 all these things but women's standards are so low that's why this is happening I, i'm doing this out of a place of love because i want to help i want to make the world a better place but i want i want everyone to be happy i want everyone to be happy but I just i'm just saying like the way things are right now it's it's not going in the best direction okay so let's wrap this up uh i know this is a super duper long video so uh so i got um not a, this is not a double standard uh i am not being discriminatory this is just personal preference these are my own personal preferences and i know not a lot of men have these preferences is because sadly most men are these beta male ahab cuck uh simps straight up it's very rare to meet an alpha male to meet a sigma male it's very rare um and it's why so many women are attracted to those types of men is because so many of these dudes are feminine they're feminine beta male ahab which is just like this just cuck simp thing that's where most dudes are that's why i'm not friends with most dudes is because they're beta male ahab feminine simps and it's like very rare do i meet another alpha male another sigma male and uh yeah dude yeah i'm, I'm white magic tiger i'm solo i'm solo i'm like the black swan the black sheep but just like you know i'm the outlier and so i'm out here usually most days by myself working on myself uh and so that when my wife does come along uh, my other white magical tiger my other tiger bengal tiger whatever it's gonna be we're gonna have a nice little tiger cub family um but until then god's got me isolated um and so uh, just so god can work on me god can purify me and so um i have women want tall handsome six figures fit mature men want someone not fat 
pure, they want someone that's pure, uh, and kind, but that's discriminatory. Like if, if I say like, I don't want someone that's fat, it's like, you're fat shaming. And it's like, I'm attracted to fit women. Having a preference isn't bad. It's the double standard that's bad. Yeah. No, but the preference is a preference whether there's a double standard there or not. Then you there's, can have your preference. That's fine. There's all kinds of double standards. And women are the ones left in single at the end of the day anyways and complaining about being left single. So if you guys don't get it together, it's your ball to carry. What makes you think women want to be in a relationship? Let's see. All of biological science that has stemmed since the dawn of humanity. Okay, but <laughs> things are different now. People don't want to reproduce anymore. Got it. Thanks for clearing that up. This double standard is women being called independent mature empowered for wanting to date mature men mature men who are more stable mature men who are older men had to go through a lot of experiences to become the stable mature man but on the other hand shaming men and calling men creepy for wanting to date younger women see women value a man when he has made a name for himself created value for himself that tends to happen when he gets older but men we value youth and beauty and that tends to happen when a woman is 18 to 25 this is when a woman is the most beautiful and has the most youth and has the most energy to be able to help him raise a family you can't twist the rules to be in your favor whenever you want it as long as a man is dating a woman who is of age 18 plus it is okay for him to date women who are young 80 percent of women on hinge have their height limit set to six foot or above for men that's less than 10 or 15 percent of men in the united states are above six foot and height has zero predictive ability when it comes to looking at long-term relationship happening Imagine you saying to me, I only date girls who are a size four and a half shoe. I'd be like, why? This is anecdotal, but I feel as though girls hold more of an animus towards these dating apps. They say, look, if I'm going to get on Hinge, I'm going to get the best of the best. And if it doesn't work, no problems for me. I don't give a shit if I get one match, if I get 10 matches. I'm on this thing to not get f***ed over. If I'm going to get someone, they better be tall. They better be good looking. They better be this, this, and this. Man are supposed to be men and they're supposed to, to treat their women. They have, they have a part to play. It's in the Bible. Like, what's going mm -hmm. on? Men want to be taken out and all this other stuff. Like, you a man. Like, be a man. Like, a man. Uh, hold on, hold on. You want a man in the Bible, so that's a traditional man, correct? Yeah. But modern day women aren't traditional themselves. Why Whoa. should he be traditional? It's the generation now. Oh. It's, it's the generation now. Modern day women are not traditional. Are any of you guys virgins? Uh, okay. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, 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 no. Because if we're going to put the standard on men that you want them to pay bills and be masculine and protect you, whatever, let's go all the way. Yeah, absolutely. So none of you are virgins. Okay. Uh, how many of you are good cooks and have a recipe book or whatever it may be? Recipe book? See, no, I, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like it's different now. Well, the wife. The wife does. Yeah, the wife does. So I wife does. <laughs> you cannot be non traditional women and want the man to be traditional on his side and pay full price for a depreciating asset that isn't traditional on his end. Because whether women want to accept it or not, the reason why men were traditional and chivalrous was because women were virgins, they're polite, they're feminine, they're submissive, and when you got a wife, she was a wife. Not a boss babe, not a boss None of this stupidity that's going on. Men have requirements. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. no to that. The, the, the but... difference is that men's requirements aren't respected. Yeah. That's the biggest mm -hmm. difference. Yeah, we can have standards. We well, can, you, women can, when women have standards, six feet tall, making a certain amount of money, I want them to be attractive, competent, whatever, no one bats an eye. It's considered preferences. If I say I don't want a woman that's fat, obnoxious, masculine, or a hoe, people are going to shame me and yeah. say, how dare you? You're a misogynist. <laughs> that's the difference, yeah. ladies. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the oh, real I talk agree difference. With you. How dare you? Female <laughs> standards are considered life. preferences. Male standards are considered discrimination. I agree with you. And that is why people love this show, because I say what men wish they can say, but if you talk like this, you get canceled. We've been banned off TikTok six times. I get death threats from feminists every single day. It is what it is. If I got to tell the truth, I'll do it for guys, because no guy wants to feel slighted and pay full price for something that's been used, man. And that's what marriage is. That's what a serious relationship is. That's how men quantify relationships in their head. You want younger women that you can manipulate just to mold to your lifestyle. And it's not here we go. That, that's literally it. Okay. But it's perspective. So you're gonna word it and say, oh, it's like a woman that you know understands, she's submissive and she does all this. So it's about perspectives. Okay, we're saying we want a woman that we can manipulate, that's dumb, right? That's timid, etc. Okay, that doesn't understand her worth it. We want women that you're What if I said women are 
stupid, can't make money, short and weak because they want a guy that makes more money than them, tall than them, more confident, ambitious, etc. That would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? Because I'm demonizing what you want, but we don't do that with women, do we? We don't tell women, well, you're stupid and you're broke and you don't have your own confidence and you don't have your own ambition and you're just inept. We that's don't tell do. women. That's what you guys no, 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 do. No, 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 but that's, see my logic here. We don't shame female preferences. This is what it is. Um, I have a star on this one. Very few women seem to actually practice celibacy. Okay, so if you go to like the NoFap website on reddit.com, it's like 90, 95, if not more, like percentile men. Most, a lot of men realize, I, but it is true, like most men watch pornography. It's okay, so, so it kind of makes sense why more of NoFap would be that. But just in my own personal experience meeting men and women, most of the people that I've met practicing celibacy are male. I don't meet many females. I have met a lot of females saying they're gonna be celibate and pure. And then one month goes by, two months, three months, and they're back, quote unquote, on the streets, having one night stands. I, that's just that's just what it is. They, they call themselves born again virgins. Ah, yes, the born again virgin. <laughs> I don't know who you ladies think you're fooling. You have 10, 15, 25, a hundred partners, and now you want to get serious? Now, all of a sudden, I'm going to wait things out. <laughs> you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Sure, a woman could decide that she's not going to put out so easily now. and Now she's going to make guys wait. But if there's genuine desire there, she's going to rationalize it to herself. She's going to make it make sense why... I'm going to make an exception for this guy. If she's not trying to rationalize it, if she's not doing mental gymnastics, it's because he's just not the right guy. And that's okay. But guys need to recognize that quickly so they don't waste their time, energy, and resources. You know what I mean? I know the Bible says to wait until you're married to have sex. I know. But what I'm looking at is outcomes. And when I go into churches, I see a lot of single people and I don't see a lot of families. And in the Bible, it's said to be fruitful, be fruitful and multiply. It's always the bitch you got ran through. I'm sorry, it's, it's never the guy. And she's always broken. What the fuck? Just call it what it is, bitch. Look it, you you met Mr. Tall, Dark and Handsome. It's like, you were feeling him. That's like, you're human, it's okay. But, so then the church is like on top of this. Let's give her a platform to talk to other women yeah. and market being a hoe. Get the hoes out of the church. They don't belong here. Where's the craziest place you've had s oh, I'm a virgin. Good for you, girl. <laughs> Wait, my mom might see this. I mean, that's good that your mom will see this. She's, you're a virgin. She'll yes, like that. exactly. I'm doing good, mom. You're doing good. She's in New York and she's a virgin. Yeah. yeah. Where is the craziest place you want to have sex? Maybe literally right there in the center of like the fountain or something. Are you happily independent? In New York. I don't know if I'm happy, but I'm independent. <laughs> so many people were like lit up in this comment section because it is so weird to see like a young woman who looks very cool and fun and like attractive talking about not being super sexual. I think people were just freaked out. Like one person said, Why are there some people that still don't believe her? Y'all pretend like it's illegal or something to be a virgin. I mean, culturally, in like college that sort of thing it almost feels like it is somebody else said at this age virgin not good parents when they want to hear that what do you mean good parents don't want their kids whoring themselves around to put it mildly are you saving uh, yourself for marriage i am Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said you're wait, you're saving yourself for marriage now. Yes? Saving. I, I, so you're, I have, you're, you're a born again virgin. Yes, yes. Ah. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that before. Like, Asteroid. <laughs> so a lot of these girls go through the 304 phase, even if they're not on OnlyFans, right? Let's say they're just doing it in real life. Oh, I'm getting drunk, going to the club. Hee hee hee, ha ha ha. Oh, I don't remember his name, whatever. They do that, and then they think they can reverse and delete, right? Like, okay, I'm going to do it from 20, say, younger, they do it now, but say 18 to 26, and then, you know what? Clean slate, start over like nothing happened, right? Born again virgin, yay, I can get my innocence back. You can't get your innocence back. And then like three months down the road, six months down the road, a year later, <laughs> 
so they're not born again virgins anymore like it, this whole born again virgin thing is a joke especially when you call yourself born again virgin and then you go off and you start sleeping around again and it's like delusional you're not born again virgin a i don't i don't have i don't like this whole born again virgin thing i don't buy it you're a virgin once and then it's gone, like it's gone. And um, this idea that you're born again virgin, no. You can seek the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and, and have real physical, mental, emotional, spiritual healing because Jesus Christ is the master healer of everything. Yes, that's real. Can he make you a virgin again? No, Jesus Christ, I don't think he can make you a virgin again. That's something that we have to use our own free will and once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and so I think we gotta drop this whole born again virgin thing just because it's just, it's just, nah, I don't buy it. I just, nah, it's just like, own up to it. Made mistakes in the past. Not a virgin. Um, better luck next reincarnation. Um, this is a truth channel. If you don't like it, leave. Okay. Uh, and, and don't forget to unsubscribe, unfollow, and smash the thumbs down button. Okay. Uh, so if you don't like this message from White Magic Tiger, I would like you to unsubscribe unclick the notification bell and smash the thumbs down button smash it smash it because this is a truth channel i only want brothers and sisters who love the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and what's the truth the truth is god god's the truth and who is the best role model for women who is the best role model for women who do y'all think boom mother mary dude mother mary is the best role model for women and for men too is the virgin of virgins and she is the Theotokos. Theo means theology, like Theos, God. Tokos means bearer, carrier. The Theotokos, Mother Mary, is the carrier of God, the bearer of God. She's so pure and holy that God decided, yo, I'm going to incarnate myself inside your womb. That's Mother Mary. And that's something that all women should strive to role model. All these ridiculous role models and not even use the word role models these false idols in hollywood and the music industry the movie industry uh whatever it is they are horrible horrible role models the, most of them is false idolatry um an excellent role model are the saints the yogis of india the yogis of europe the yogis of africa the yogis of north and south america the saints these are excellent role models mother mary probably the best of best role models for women and for men too and and, and, and i've been a lot of the time because i keep my handy dandy rosary right here in this baggie um I, I i blessed it in the ganges today i put it in the water and i said a little prayer over it and my friend suggested it it was actually pretty wild i met her in 2019 in guatemala in san marcos and then i bumped into her at a restaurant uh here i actually bumped into her in dharam kat dharmasala at another restaurant and then i bumped into her again here in rishikesh and um uh anyway she suggested it's kind of crazy she's saying like her mother's like super devout catholic and like says the rosary all the time and and i'm not i'm not like crazy catholic anything but i am like a seventh generation catholic i know it's like it goes back like five six generations but I want to be that that's like documented I'm pretty sure it goes back farther but it's like so I think I'm like at least seven generations Catholic but I'm actually working on converting to orthodoxy right now because I realized well orthodoxy is actually older than Catholicism and it's like all the cool parts of Catholicism but without all like the pedophilia and without the Pope and like everything that's messed up with Catholicism like you know like all the demand dem demonic satanic stuff orthodoxy is like a lot more pure um but i still dig the the, the rosary the rosary is amazing and then the the I, on this the jesus prayer lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner amen that that comes from the orthodox church uh this hail mary sophia full of grace the lord christ is with thee blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy spirit mother of god pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death amen this is i dig this too yo uh, and so uh, I hope y'all found this video inspirational. I genuinely like I don't want to like come off as a dick and like it's like I know it's supposed to be like an apology video and um, for if I offended any of like these men and women that are really working on their sexual purity, amazing, absolutely amazing. Keep going. I, I'm mainly grilling the people that aren't. Um, and it's like, well, why do you care so much? And it's like, yeah, well, why are you watching my video? I'm just, I'm just saying it how it is. And deep down, I'm speaking the truth. I, I kind of like in a fatherly figure. I know I'm a, I have a young body, but my soul, I think my soul is pretty old on this one. And essentially it's like, yo, a lot of these women, even men too, 
your father's not in the picture and i've been i've been studying for a while i've been learning like divine masculine traits and it's starting to i've made my mistakes too but things are starting to click and and some of y'all I, I i guess like in a way like i'm of the age to be a father and like this if, if i had a daughter or if i had a son this is exactly what i would be telling them right now so yeah this is kind of like fatherly advice uh, even though i don't have a physical child right now but if i did i would be telling this to my children don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't watch this porn. Don't sleep around. Save yourself for marriage. De devote your life to the Almighty, to God, because that's the source of love. That's the source of real happiness. That's what we really want. We want the love of God. We don't want this physical, fleeting, temporary, sexual, fleeing thing. And then you get soul ties and, and just like sexually transmitted demons. And it's like, no, we got to wait for something pure and holy uh, that's ordained by God and it's gonna be lovely and then we're, we're gonna have children and these children are gonna be essentially angels incarnate like the angels from heaven are gonna incarnate in my wife's womb and we're gonna have these like beautiful angelic children and we're gonna bring heaven on earth and it's gonna be amazing and so uh, so genuinely I, I, I don't I don't want to come off as like harsh and so I, I hope this like somewhat of a forgiveness video I hope you can see where I'm coming from. I hope you can see where my heart is on this one. Uh, I, I, I hold some pretty strong ideals and ideas. Uh, and, I, and I just, I, I'm very uh, dedicated to purity, purification. And, and so I hope, you, I hope you all found this helpful. Uh, I'm genuinely working on myself and want to be dedicated to the truth, but also be dedicated to love and compassion at the same time and not be so stern and strict and, 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 and have that room for kindness and patience and compassion. And so hopefully you can see that. And um, yeah, all right. May God bless all y'all. Namaste from Rishikesh. Bye. God, Krishna, Christ, Guru, God.